If you have your Bibles, would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? I want to issue a warrant for your intelligent arrest and summon you to St. Matthew 21. St. Matthew 21. If you don't have a Bible, share with somebody close by. If they don't have a Bible, get new friends. <laughs> One of y'all got to have the word. Amen. I'm going off uh, the liturgical calendar. I'm mindful that we're after Pentecost, uh, but I'm, I've got to go backwards just to get to um, the brunt of where I feel God leaning tonight. Matthew 21, verses 6, 7, and 8. Matthew 21, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 8. Here's what the word of the Lord says in the New International Version. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread it on the road. Let's uh, illuminate for our understanding verse number eight, please. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from trees. You may be seated. I want to uh, ask that you'll arm yourself with a writing instrument, please. Uh, those of you who are technologically savvy, uh, there is an app that came free with your tablet or your cell phone that affords and allots you the space to take notes. Uh, there's some critical points and principles that I want to give you on tonight. And physiologists suggest that we forget 93% of what we hear. And as a consequence, I can't afford for you to forget 93% of this sermon. I work too hard. I, I, I want to preach for a little while tonight using as a subject, stop cutting yourself short. Stop cutting yourself short. Would you look at the person beside you and ask them, would you do me a favor, please? Stop cutting yourself short. The contrast in the present president and the previous one is overwhelmingly glaring. While Mr. Trump claims to champion business, the legacy of Barack Obama rings with jobs. When he assumed the helm of the presidency in 2009, the Bureau of Labor Statistics showed how employers had slashed 791,000 jobs. In 2009, unemployment across the United States was at 7.6%. Eight years later, the gloom had been lifted with 75 consecutive months of job growth, which is an undermentioned record in American history. With unemployment lowered across the board at 5%. I want to say maybe just to somebody who's in the balcony, it won't be long now before God releases the job that matches your gift. You have too much in you to work somewhere that stresses you. 
You shouldn't be, in fact, toiling your days in an environment that does not appreciate your gift and takes you for granted. As a matter of fact, God's not going to give you a job. He's going to give you a career. And just as things were looking up, on Friday, Wall Street was wobbly because the jobs report for May was a meager 98,000, the lowest in over nine years. It's a terrible thing when you're starting to bounce back and you feel like you're falling back. Maybe you've never had that feeling that you were, in fact, making progress and something will show up that forces you to do the electric slide backwards. And you can't understand how it is that unforeseen things seem to become an enemy to your progress. Stirring the product pot of concern for investors is the fact that in under 140 days, we've had airstrikes in Syria. With so many questions up in the air, such as what is its extent? Because since the strike, there's been no mention. And as a consequence, the oil industry is feeling a great deal of insecurity. Since 9-11, we've maintained a conflict with all of the Middle East, hear this, except where there are reserves. You can't ever allow warfare to deplete your oil. I'm talking to some people who are in this room who know that you're called, know you are assigned, know you are anointed, hear this, but you're drained. And you don't even know what's wrong with you. You can't sleep at night. Or you oversleep in the morning. You're drained. You don't remember the last time you were legitimately happy. A foreign sound is what your own authentic laughter sounds like. You're drained from everybody always depending on you but nobody ever checking on you. You're drained because it takes a lot out of you to have to always be strong and act like I don't know what you said about me. I've run out of cheeks because I keep turning them. But you don't understand. Yes, I'm saved, but there's an Old Testament me. I'm tired of being in a relationship by myself. Having to deal with children whose behavior I don't recognize. I'm tired of having to force myself to be content when I'm actually miserable. I've had to be my own life coach and therapist. That before I get out of the car to go into that job, I've got to talk myself off the ledge. My co-workers don't know. They ought to thank God I got a prayer life because I've learned how to say to God, please don't let nobody come sideways at me. And while it is that on Friday the stock market began to tumble, I've come to Little Rock tonight because there are three stocks that I want to recommend to you for your portfolio. The first one, would you write this down please? The first one is Core Laboratories. Core Laboratories. The name isn't commonly recognizable to most of you who are in the sanctuary uh, because, hear this, they, they don't sell oil. Goodman, they just produce it. 
because they are about the business of helping producers get the most oil out of the ground at the lowest cost. Their stock is more valuable than Shell or Exxon or BP because they've made it their business, hear this, to help other people pull their oil out. I think I've lost you. The shares have been down over 40% over the past three years, but it has an advanced cost structure that allows it to factor in, hear this, the slow season. So even in the slow season, its value never diminishes. I came for 50 of you who need to know that it's only by the grace of God you survived the slow season. As now here's what's amazing is that even when you were struggling, you had people jealous. During the slow season, it's, it's confusing. Can y'all talk to me? It's confusing because people who got more than you don't like you. And you're trying to figure out why you hating on me and I ain't got nothing. Eh? It's because God kept his hand on you even in your slow in your slow season. And so even during the slow season, watch this, they kept digging. The CEO, David Demsher, said on the earnings call two weeks ago that global oil markets have been undersupplied. And there's getting ready to be a mandate for oil. I hope you can hear me that God is getting ready to bless you, hear me, because people are going to need you. And the people who are going to need you are the people who ignored you. Some of you, I hope you don't tear your row up. God said, before the 4th of July, I'm going to make family members apologize. Because they didn't realize you were the one that carried the oil for your family. The reason why God keeps blessing you is because you love people with no motive. Uh, you, you got a bad case of the can't help it. You, you always give yourself, here it is, to people that don't deserve it. You forgive Negroes who ain't sorry. I can't hear nobody. You, you always put yourself out there to be last, and they always keep taking from you. But God said, if you give me glory tonight, oil is getting ready to come. Now, those of y'all that don't believe it, don't shout with us. But if you believe this is the season, my cup is getting ready to run over. You ought to shout for new oil. You're getting ready. Hear this. You're getting ready to bounce back. Hallelujah. I need you to hear me very carefully. You're getting ready to bounce back, but not bounce back. In general, you're going to bounce back. Here it is, in your field. So God says, I'm getting ready to bless you in the area you're trained in. And the area you got passion in, even though it's been slow. Hallelujah. I'm tired of you robbing Peter to pay back Bartholomew. But God says, I'm getting ready to help you to get a season of Sabbath where you're going to be able to go into cruise control. And can I tell you, that's why your manager don't like you is because you don't do it by the manual, but you get it done. And I'm talking to 50 of you that say, God, if you ever give me an opportunity in my field, I will shut it down. God said, I ain't going to open the door. I'm going to crack it. And if you kick it in, I'll give you the desires of your heart because there's oil in your field. Be seated, please. Um, second stock I want you to write down, please, is um, that is positioned for a turnaround uh, is under arm. And Under Armour has been embattled in the last two quarters with sales slowly going down and investments are not maturing. And analysts speculate that the company is on crutches because of the comments that the president, Kevin Plank, made.
praising President Trump, forcing top endorsed athletes to publicly distance themselves. But here this low rock, Under Armour is about to make a turnaround in this next quarter. Pastor, how was that? So they get me to make a turnaround, hear this, because they still have a promise. Because only 15% of its sales are from international markets. But it's growing, watch this, to 63% before September. You just missed it. The analyst said Under Armour would only in the international market have 15% growth. But by September, they are projected to reach 63%. So the reason why it's getting ready to turn around is because their support is not coming from who's close. The support, y'all ain't saying nothing to me, is coming from people who are far. I need you to brace yourself because who's getting ready to bless you in this season is not the people who are close to you. Because sometimes the people who are close to you get too comfortable and they take your greatness for granted. But God is getting ready to raise up some people who are not like your regular circle. Would you look at your neighbor, tell them I'm not like the rest of your friends. I'm, I'm not jealous of you. Watch this. I'm not threatened by you and I don't need nothing from you. And to prove it to you, when I give God glory tonight is not for me. I'm getting ready to shout for the next season of your life. I need you, come on, I can't hear nobody. Would you shout for whoever's beside you like God is going to exceed your expectation and do what you didn't even know was possible. In this country, um, they were falling, watch this, uh, they were falling into dire street straits because their main distributor is Sports Authority. And Sports Authority has filed bankruptcy. But a store by the name of Coles has stepped in. Hallelujah. All right. God is getting ready to replace for 50 of y'all, y'all better tear this club up. God is getting ready to replace, watch this, whoever refused to help you. He said, you ain't going to have to kiss up. You ain't got to sleep with nobody. You ain't got to beg nobody to do nothing. God said, I'm going to raise up somebody that wants to bless you with no strings attached. Um, third stock I want you to have, please. And I'm, I'm hastening to the text. Third stock I want you to have is... Uh, is, uh, is Rite Aid. Rite Aid, the troubled drugstore. The drugstore that keeps languishing at the bottom. Walgreens, the rival titan, has agreed to buy the long-standing American convenience store at $7 a share. They're going to invest in it, Pointer, while they're failing. They still see the value, even though it ain't doing well. I got the wrong church in here, see? See, it's easy to ride with somebody who's already a success. But you need somebody to stick with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. When you don't feel like going to church. When, when you're not in your best. And they got to shake you and remind you. I ain't going to let you be depressed over no man. I, I ain't going to let you be stressed out over no money. Greater is he that is in you. The merger, watch this, will catapult right aid into a meteoric rise. When you keep going down or feeling down, God has the unique tendency to connect you to something or somebody that's stronger. All right. 
So, so Rite Aid stock is going down, but it's getting ready to make a turn. Why, Pastor? Because of who it's connected to. I got the wrong church here. See, iron sharpens iron. When you going through, do not get connected with somebody who is as miserable as you are. Okay. You, you, you got to get connected to somebody who's got a spirit of optimism. But you look at the person beside you, tell them, you ain't going to sit next to me looking crazy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And everything that's on me is getting ready to jump into your life. I speak grace into the life of whoever is connected to me. Rite Aid is, um, is barely profitable. Uh, but it's um, Rite Aid currently, as of 1117 this morning, uh, Rite Aid is trading seven times above its value. God, uh, y'all are the slow class. I'm bringing the yellow bus. Let me, I, I, I said it's trading above its value. That's why the enemy can't stand you. Is he doesn't understand why you are that valuable even though you keep taking a loss. Hallelujah. I can't hear nobody. They still can't understand how you dress like that. They, they still don't know how you drive like that. I can't hear nobody. They don't even understand what I got on ain't even new. I just learned how to accessorize it. This skirt don't even go with this. But God has raised my value. Oh. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm coming around the mountain. Here I come. Hallelujah. I feel God coming right through here. Elbow the person beside to tell them you've lost enough stuff. But after you give God glory tonight, no more losses. I can't hear you St. Mark I said no more losses you ain't gonna have no more deaths in your family you ain't gonna lose the house you ain't gonna lose the car you ain't gonna lose your marriage you ain't gonna lose your mind no more losses and as um as we jaywalk into the text, we find ourselves in Matthew 21. And in Matthew 21, Jesus is starting to feel like his stock is going down. We're coming to the rising climax of his ministry and the grand finale of his journey. And he's just one week away from crucifixion and ultimately resurrection. He gives the disciples instructions. Go into town. Find a colt and untie it. And then bring it to me. Our master mounts the beast. And begins to ride into Jerusalem. And the crowd goes wild. They begin screaming, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And most congregations uh, during, um, this, during the Lenten season affix their focus on that aspect. On people crying, Hosanna. People taking off from work. That this is what theologians and biblicists call the triumphal entry. And I, I um, today want to take another vantage point. I'm not even um, talking about Jesus. As heretical as that may seem. I don't even want to preach about the cult. Um, I don't even want to people talk about the people who are praising God. But good men, who I want to talk about today who nobody has ever paused to interview is the palm tree.
and 2017 years later, nobody has ever done a psychological analysis on how the palm tree must have felt on that day. And I want to put that palm tree under the panoply of psychology and zoom in the high power objective to try to figure out what's going on in the mind of the palm tree. He says, uh, Brother Pastor, I'm, uh, I'm standing by the roadside. And I'm the only one who's born in the position of worship. Because nobody has to tell me, lift my hands. They're already lifted. Y'all forgive me, we got spectators in the room, but I got a few worshipers in here who understand I don't need a praise team, a choir, or the pastor. All I need is a flashback to think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I wish you would lift up your hands and open up your mouth. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I'm standing there and I'm thinking this is finally my shot because nobody has ever paid attention that I'm a born worshiper. And I keep hearing that Jesus is on the way and I can't wait for my opportunity. Y'all always talk about the sycamore tree. <laughs> you always talk about the tree in the Garden of Eden. But nobody ever talks about my faithfulness. How it is that I stood even when people were trying to break me. God, I can't hear nobody. See, some of you deserve a Nobel Prize because your greatest blessing is being able to stand even when people put their foot on you. I can't hear nobody with everything that you've been through. You should have had a nervous breakdown. I can't hear nobody. You should have keyed up somebody's car. You should have committed suicide off the top of your head. You should have killed two people. But you're able to say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And I'm still standing. still standing and I'm I'm hearing that Jesus is coming so I'm excited about my opportunity to shine because I was created to worship him and finally he's coming down my street and just when he's two blocks away something strange happens is people who have never invested in my cultivation people who never pruned me in the off season People who never warded me in the dry season start climbing on me. God, I can't hear nobody. And I was all right them climbing on me to support them so that they could have a better vision. But it wasn't enough for them to climb on me. They started breaking pieces of me. I can't hear nobody. See, some of you ought to thank God that there were some people that tried to break you, but they didn't understand I was the bomb before I ever met you. God, God's hand was on my life before the divorce. He was on my life before I got laid off. He was on my life when I was in a crazy, dysfunctional family, but they kept breaking pieces. Hallelujah. They, they kept taking breezes of me and I and nobody ever thought to see how I was doing. Am I all right? And I um and I had to adjust to it. Do you know what it means to a palm tree that has no branches? God help me. And, and you gotta stand with nothing. I'm, 
I'm, I'm, I'm talking to seven of you who are in this room who, who understands that the grace of God on my life is not connected to material stuff hallelujah I, I don't praise him for cars clothes and money I, sometimes I just gotta praise him watch this that I'm able to bathe myself and, and I'm able to feed myself I can't hear nobody so sometimes I can thank God that I'm not in therapy twice a week and, and nobody gotta put me in dialysis and I don't need physical therapy and the enemy didn't give me dementia I, I gotta thank Thank God. Thank God. I'm standing even though they stripped it and, and they broke it off of me. Thank you. Hallelujah. They, they left me standing with nothing. And here's what adds insult to injury is I've been stripped and pieces of me have been broken. And point, I hope you can handle this. And then Jesus walks by and never addresses my condition. God help me. He knows what's happened to me, but he never stops to address it. Hallelujah. So you keep celebrating the people that robbed me. I can't hear nobody. It's a terrible thing when the people who did you dirty go on with their life and you trying to pull the pieces together and you don't understand why it is that they got an advantage and you got to be there trying to figure out how am I still standing? And, uh, I didn't mean to keep it as long. My uh my time is almost over. I am. Um, they broke pieces of me. They stripped me. And Jesus rode right past me. Never spoke to my situation. And then I heard by way of mouth that he got crucified. God help me. And, um, and he rose again. But the thing that bothers me, watch this, is uh, dead people came out the grave. And then and every, everybody is singing the Motown classic, Have You Seen Him? Oh. And, and, and after the resurrection, watch this, here's my point of departure. After the resurrection of our darling savior, our conquering king, I'm still branchless. So how did it impact me? So I'm watching everybody in the church talking about it's my season. <laughs> it's getting ready to turn around. And I see no evidence of it in my life. I'm tithing and still broke. I can't hear nobody. I'm, I'm sowing seeds and I don't see the return. I'm, I'm nice to nasty people. I can't hear nobody in here, but, 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 but God kept me standing because I didn't understand the full order of what God was doing in my life. Here's what you need to know, St. Mark, and I'm getting out of here, is that a palm tree, watch this, it takes seven years for it to recover. I got the wrong church. Hallelujah. So it had to stand in that condition, stripped and broken for seven years. Watch this before it started to grow back. Y'all, I got to get out of here. May I tell you that tonight is the seventh year. And everything you lost since 2010 is getting ready to come back to you. Now, I don't want you to shout if you ain't lost nothing. But if you believe this is the season, it's going to be pressed out, shaken together, and run! Be seated. I feel your glory. Be seated. Be humble. Sit down. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Hi, -ya -ya. I need you to look at your neighbor. Tell him you ain't getting random stuff. Hallelujah. But what God's getting ready to give to you is what the devil stole. I know there's been a rough season, but God.
God said, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'm getting ready to make you ruler over many. Would you grab that neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, don't wait till the battle is over, but shout like it's growing back. Shout like it's coming back. Shout like he's going to give you the desire. seated for the last time. Hallelujah. I can't hear nobody. I, I need 50 of y'all to holler at your boy and say, I'm getting it back. I'm, I can't hear nobody. I survived the worst season of my life, but I'm getting it back. The enemy meant it for evil, but God is working it out for my good. I'm getting it back. Would you be seated, please? You all, um, y'all got a spirit of disobedience in Arkansas. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. The, um, the people behind you can't see. I need you to be seated. He said, you didn't even understand what the last seven years was about. God, y'all getting ready to miss it. He said, you don't even know what the last seven years was about. What Pastor God said, I wanted to see if you could shout without it. See, it's easy to praise God when you got everything. I can't hear nobody, but I want to know if you'll shout over what you lost. When, when you shout for what you don't have anymore. I needed to see what your posture would be in the face of a loss. And in the last seven years, you've had more hits than what is fair. And folk don't even know how many blows you've had. And in the back of your mind, you've been saying, God, if one more thing happened to me, God, help me, I'm going to lose everything. But this is why the devil can't stop you, is you learn how to be a base. And you learn how to be a bow. The only reason why he brought Lazarus back is to see if he was shout coming out of the grave. God said, St. Mark, if you shout, everything that tried to kill you is under you. If, if you give him glory, everything. Be seated, please. I'm trying to tell you something. Please. I'll be your best friend. Please. Hallelujah. You, hear this very carefully, you are, Bishop Robinson, the stock. God help me. I said you are the stock. Hallelujah. What do you mean by that, Pastor? God says, I am raising people up who are going to invest in your idea. God, help me. You, you got something you're trying to get off the ground, but you don't have the capital to get it done. God said, this is your last year working for somebody else. But I'm getting ready to bless your business and bless your idea and bless your concept because you are the stock. You got to figure out, am I, am I going to bend over while I'm broken? Or whether I'm going to keep standing? 
And all of it is predicated on whether or not I cut myself short. Hallelujah. Langston Hughes out of the Harlem Renaissance in a one-bedroom apartment in Harlem, New York on the corner of Lenox Avenue said, in life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It almost broke me. But I'm still standing. It almost took the wind out of me. But I'm still here. And the amazing thing is, um, you don't know how many people got ahead by stepping on me. And I took it. Because my roots go down. And I'm no pushover. Because God put something in me that made me weatherproof. Now speak over every person who's in this room. You didn't come here by accident or coincidence. But God says the reason why I got to pull it out of you. Is because I need you to have a new reason to give me glory. Because I'm tired of you shouting over old testimonies. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said, he said, I'm tired of you shouting over old testimonies. So I'm getting ready to give you something new you can shout about. This is for 300 of y'all. The rest of you just daydream. God said, give me glory if you believe between now and the 4th of July. You're going to get the biggest blessing of your life. I, I can't hear nobody. I said, open up your mouth. Y'all ain't going to shout in here like what's coming to me. It's going to be the biggest blessing of my life. I need that hand lifted. Because you just assumed the posture of a palm tree. Hallelujah. You won't be stripped. You won't be broken. Hallelujah. In spite of what you lost, it is not going to reduce the value of who you are. Tonight before our pastor comes, I'm getting ready to make the chair films jealous. How, pastor? Because we're getting ready to worship God. And we have an advantage that the angels don't have. Why? Because the angels have never had to bury their mother. God, I can't hear nobody. The angels have never been scared about cancer. The angels have never had a son in and out of jail. But God said, when you give me glory, you're saying, God, I love you in spite of everything that I lost. We've created an environment where we only know how to worship God on material stuff. But on that Palm Sunday, Jesus didn't preach. He didn't heal anybody. Watch this. They worshipped him just because they were glad to be in his presence. My time is up, but I'm looking for a few worshipers who are in the room. Would you lift up that hand and open up your mouth like you're glad to be in his presence? Come on, I can't, come on. I can't hear you. I said cry like you glad. Y'all not going to say anything? I dare you to worship him. You only got 30 seconds left. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to give him glory. I dare you to open up your mouth. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I got to give him glory. I gotta give him thanksgiving. I gotta give him honor. Hallelujah. I tell the members of our church softly, minstrels. I tell the members of our church, watch this. Lift your hands as high as you see yourself going.
Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, lift your hands as high as you see yourself going. You just entered your season of promotion. You just entered a season of elevation and a season of increase. Lift your hands like this is the lowest you ever going to be. I speak over every lifted hand. I speak over every lifted hand that not another thing will be taken from you. Y'all didn't shout good. I said not another thing will be taken from you. I speak over every lifted hand that God is getting ready to make up for the last seven years of your life. God is getting ready to restore everything you lost in the last seven years. I speak over every lifted hand that this will be the summer of supernatural success that everything you pray for is going to come to pass. And those of you, your faith is connected to my faith. Would you open up your mouth and shout like God is going to give you the glory tonight? I said lift up your voice like God is going to get the glory. I want you to hug three people and tell them something big is getting ready to happen. Something big is getting ready to happen. Something big is getting ready 